Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my very first Photoshop tutorial for YouTube. And we're gonna be creating this awesome Harry Potter looking image right here as the thumbnail and video title probably suggested, but just to reiterate. So this is the final product we have here. Uh, this is what we're going for and I'm gonna show you guys how to get here uh, from all the different layers of glow, of color, of the spell and the varied effects within that to really make it look realistic, make it pop. Uh, the slight little stuff like the reflection on the eyes and the lighting on the face. All to come out with an image, hopefully as cool if not cooler than this one right here. So we start with our base image. If you're taking a photo of yourself uh, for something like this, always keep the lighting in mind. So I've lit myself, um, probably not bright enough, but enough to work with. And lighting, keeping in mind that the spell will be coming from the tip of the wand here and lighting this side of my face. So without further ado, we're going to create a layer. Just grab your brush tool. You can come over here and grab it here or press Press B on your keyboard. We're going to make sure the opacity is at 100%. You can drag it all the way up or you can press 0 on your keyboard. Um, I've got everything set to 100%. I've got my pen pressure on because I'm using a pen tablet. And we're going to be using a soft round brush from the Evident Concept Art Brush Pack. I like it a little bit more than the, the baseline Photoshop soft round brush. So that's my preference, but you can use any soft brown brush you desire. So with that selected, make sure we have our white color selected. And with a fairly small brush, we're going to paint our little spell in. So from the tip of the wand out and something like that, maybe a little more directed downward with a little bit of wave to it. That's looking awesome right there. And we're gonna, I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. And we're gonna, just going to try to make the spell look like it's expanding as it leaves the wand. So just add a little more thickness to it as it leaves the wand. And we're going to fix any of the inconsistencies here in just a second. We're going to come in here and we're going to paint in a little white dot at the end of our wand and you'll see why momentarily great it's that simple now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and grab the smudge tool this is a tool that phase runner if you've heard of that creator on youtube if you haven't you need to look him up because he's amazing he uses it a lot in his art and i think it just is awesome it looks so good so what we're going to do here is we're going to drag it, what it does is smears and smudges what we already have on this layer. So we can just smear this spell around to make it look like almost like a muzzle flare or muzzle flash from a gun. And I'm going to speed this up and just do this all along the spell. So hopefully, as you saw, I just went along the length of the spell, just making it look a little more interesting, adding a little dynamic to it, um, taking away, away where I thought I overdid it, and just coming out with something that I think looks pretty cool. And you'll see how this all plays into it as we continue with the tutorial. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our layer and double click and bring up the layer styles panel. We're going to come down here and add an outer glow to it. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I, through my many hours of watching Harry Potter and studying it, studying it to create a realistic looking spell Photoshop, 
have found that the spell I'm going for, Expelliarmus, has a little bit of an orange tinge to it. Obviously, for whatever spell you're creating, you can add any color you want. Um, but for this specific one, I'm going for a nice orange, orange, deep red, deep orange, something along those lines. You know what I'm saying. And a nice deep orangish red. Click OK. And I've found that these settings work great for me. So a spread of three, a size of 49, and a range of about 89. But really, it's up to you to make the, the size as big or as small as you want and just landing on something that looks good because we're going to be adding a glow, another glow on top of this. So find something that looks decent. Uh, I don't want it to look too intense. It kind of looks just like a lightsaber glow almost. And we're going to click OK on that. So here we are so far. Looks good. We're going to make it look great. Now we're going to come over here and grab this layer of our spell and we're gonna duplicate it. So we're gonna do Control or Command J. We're gonna right click on this layer and clear the layer style so we just have that original white spell. From here we're gonna duplicate this one. We're gonna take that duplicated layer, go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're gonna crank it up to about 180. Something like that. So it gets you this nice little halo glow around here. And we're going to do that same thing with less blur for about three or four layers. So I'm going to duplicate this one again. Go up here, blur, Gaussian blur, maybe about 90. And I'm going to do this two more times. Duplicate, blur, Gaussian blur maybe about 40, eh, maybe even like 30 or 20. Let's go 30. And then one more time, duplicate, blur, Gaussian blur, maybe something like five, just for a nice little central glow. And we're, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take all these layers, shift, click to group, uh, to get all of them selected, and we're going to do Control or Command E to merge that layer, all those layers all into one. From here, we take this Control or Command U, which will bring up our hue and saturation uh, panel. We're going to click Colorize. We're going to take the saturation all the way up to 100. Drop the lightness down to about negative 35. Anywhere in the negative 30s should work really well. And we're going to add a slight orange hint to it, maybe about a four on the hue. Click OK. And we're going to change the blending mode from normal to screen. So as you can see, it's a nice little subtle glow. Um, just We're just building it up. So we've done it once on the layer itself with the outer glow. And then we're doing another glow here. And we're going to do one more. And for this one, we're going to do a new layer. Gonna make sure we have our brush tool selected. Make it nice and big. We're gonna select a nice deep orange, orangish red color. We're gonna go in here and paint lightly over top to add a little more glow. <laughs> so once you have something looking like this, we're again gonna change this from normal to screen. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to create a layer mask and paint away using black, using a black color. We're going to paint away anywhere where we think it's a little too excessive because we, again, we want to make this look realistic. We don't want it to be too much uh, because we're still going to be adding some stuff later, later that will help, help it uh, glow a little bit more. So just maybe bring down the edges a little bit. I changed my opacity of my brush to about 50%. And we're just going to paint away anywhere where we think we could do without the excessive glow. And once we have something like this, that looks pretty good. We're going to make it visible and invisible. And maybe delete some right around here. 
And I think we got something that looks pretty realistic so far. And we're going to make it look even better right now, actually. So below your glow layers and above your normal spell layer, we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to go down in our Evident Design Brush Pack to this Sparks brush which we passed, it's right here. And so to see this, I'm gonna change the color of my brush back to white. I'm gonna make sure the opacity is all the way up to 100%. And as you can see, it does some awesome looking sparks. And if you lay them in over the spell and underneath the glow, it looks like it's coming off that core of the, of the spell. And so I'm gonna speed it up for you guys real quick, but I'm just gonna go in here and add sparks where I think looks good. And uh, it's really just personal choice. So check it out. <laughs> Okay, so now we're at a spot where we're gonna go back in and just erase some of this. So we've laid in what looks like a good foundation and we're gonna go in and just refine it some more. So with another layer mask on here, make sure you have a soft round brush selected. Grab this. We're gonna go in with black and just paint away anything that's a little just a little excessive. And then we're at a point where I think it's looking really good. It's, it's subtle, but still adds a lot to the spell. The next step is we're going to add a nice lens flare. So to do this, we're going to create another new layer. We can just do it right on top of that sparks layer. And we're going to go down here. And I got these lens flares. There's just a free lens flare brush pack on the internet. You can just search lens flare brushes for Photoshop. And I found that the flare number one on this looks pretty sweet. So I'm just gonna set the rotation a little different and we're gonna place it right over top of that, uh, the point, the, the point of the wand, the wand tip, if you will. Good grief. Okay, so that looks awesome already. It, it looks like it's just helping it all seem like it's emitting light and energy. But I think it's a little too sharp, so we're gonna go up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Probably my favorite blur of all time. We're gonna crank it up to about 10 to just soften it all a little bit. And then from here, we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier, and we're gonna colorize it. So Control or Command U to get your hue and saturation sliders up. Colorize, saturation all the way up. Lightness to about negative 35, anywhere in the negative 30s is good. Make it a little more orange. Click OK, and we're gonna change the blending mode from normal to linear dodge. Oh, we don't wanna do that. And then from here again, once again, we're gonna create another layer mask. And with black, we're gonna paint in anywhere that we don't want this to be showing up. Subtle is the name of the game. So I'm just gonna erase down here a little bit because uh, I think it's just bleeding a little too much into the darkness. Maybe even out here on the outskirts just lightly brushing over, not not 100%, and if you need to, you can go back to white on this layer mask and paint it back in. Um, and then we get to a spot where we think looks pretty good. And I'm thinking it still looks a little too saturated, so I'm going to control command U, bring up the hue saturation slider, drop the saturation down just a little bit, and that's looking so awesome. As you can see, so with the linear dodge, 
blending mode, it kind of makes it look like this right here is almost like lava or molten steel or iron, whatever whatever metal. It just looks molten and, and looks like it's emitting heat and energy and light, which is exactly what we're going for. The next step, I don't know how many times I've said the next step or something like that. But once we group these layers together, we're going to control or command G and we're going to name this spell. And now we're going to add some lighting to my face because uh, this is an important part of making this all sell. Because as you can see, it looks pretty cool already, but it's not really affecting my face at all. So to do that, I'm going to zoom right up in here. You're welcome. That was a joke, by the way. And we're going to create an exposure adjustment layer. And we're going to up that exposure. And as you can see on the image, it brightens it all up quite a bit. So we're going to just going to lift that a lot, drop the gamma correction a little bit as well. And we're going to control or command I on this layer mask to invert it. And now we're going to go in here with white with our brush and we can just paint in the light. So I'm going to again speed this up and you'll just see that I'm adding light wherever I think this spell will affect. So check it out. Okay, we're back. So as you can see, I just, again, painted in wherever I thought uh, needed some light. And then I went back in and erased anywhere that uh, just overdid it. And then the same thing, not the same thing rather. Um, woo, lost for words, apologies. So yeah, I but Painting in with about 50% opacity on the brush, uh, maybe 20 if I just want to be a little more subtle with it. And even, even the areas over here, just making sure just a little bit of light is catching over there, but nothing too extensive. And now what we're going to do is the opposite. We're going to add a little shadow to this side of my face. This is something you don't necessarily have to do, but for me, I think it could just stand to darken up a little bit. So we're going to create another exposure adjustment layer. Drop the exposure this time. Up the gamma. We're going to invert that with controller command I. And again with a with your with a white brush, you're going to come in here. You can be fairly messy with this. You don't have to be super exact. And just paint away a uh, paint in wherever you stand you think could uh, could stand to darken up a bit you could be pretty messy with this you don't have to be super exact or anything especially with a lower opacity you can feel free to to be a little more free with it yes exactly all right so i've got something looking pretty good here um, i think it's dark enough it's an it adds a nice contrast to it as well you can always make it visible and invisible uh, to test to make sure it's getting the effect that you want. And in this case, it is. All right. So I know what you're thinking. We need to add some color to my face because right now it's just emitting a normal white light. But as we can see, it's a nice orangish red. So on top of everything, we're going to create a color, a solid color layer. We're going to make it that same nice deep orangish red or close to it at least. I don't, I don't work very exactly as uh, some of you guys have probably caught on to. And we're going to do a color blending mode. Um, you can mess around with screen, color dodge, linear dodge, or overlay depending on your image. But for this one specifically, I think color lends itself especially well. So we're going to do that one and we're going to invert this layer mask, control or command I. And again, with about a 50% opacity, maybe even uh, less than that, 
and with a white brush, I'm going to come in here and start adding some color to me. And I'll speed it up again for you guys. Okay, so here we are. We've got a nice color added to the image. If we make that invisible and visible, you can see it just really adds a lot to it. Um, it makes it much more realistic. It's not just a, a white light coming now. It's more red and more orange, and it adds something to the spell itself as well. One of the final things we're going to do here is we're going to add some reflections to the eyes. This is a super easy thing to do here. We're going to create a new layer. We're, we can put it underneath the spell layer. And just with a, with a white brush, soft, a soft round white brush at 100% opacity, we're just going to draw in our best, uh, our best imitation of what that spell would look like as a reflection, which basically just imitate the relative shape of the spell that you've drawn for yourself. And it doesn't have to be perfect because again, this is gonna be something so subtle, but something that will just help sell it that much more. And you're just gonna paint it on really quick, really easy, too much there. Okay, and something like that. And for this, maybe even erase, uh, create a layer mask and just erase subtly here it doesn't need to be super overdone, especially since this eye won't be catching it nearly as much as this eye. Then from there, what I'm going to do just to make it pop a little bit more is we're going to add that same outer glow we did earlier to the spell. You can go to outer glow. And we're just going to reduce the size considerably. Maybe make that range pop a little bit. And really just making sure that size isn't, isn't too ex extensive or excessive, if you will. And as we zoom out, we really see, and if we, uh, if we make it visible and invisible, we really see how much that helps continue to sell this effect, that it's a real thing that we aren't just creating in Photoshop. And that, I think, is, is the goal for the Photoshops I try to do is make it look realistic as if it exists in real life. So here we are coming towards the end. Last thing we're going to do here is we're going to, we can either create a new color fill layer or in this case, I'm just going to actually, no, we're going to do another color fill layer. So solid color, pick that same orangish reddish, color, click OK, invert it, done this all before. We're going to make this one screen and we're going to use the gradient tool. So you can come over here and get this tool here or you can just press G on your keyboard. Make sure the radial gradient is selected. We're going to do about 50% opacity. That should work well. And you can just drag from, from the center and it'll just make, oh, make sure. <laughs> Make sure it's white, make sure you got a white color selected. And just from wherever you drag, it's gonna produce a radial glow effect, which looks already super awesome with just one drag. We're gonna add one more, just to add a little bit more. Eh, maybe drop it to 20% to make it a little more subtle. Great, and now we have something like that. We're gonna do a layer, a new layer with just white, a white color selected with that gradient still. You're going to do a small one, small one here. You can up the opacity again to 50%. And we're going to change this to overlay. And that'll do a similar effect that this lens flare did and making this look like it's either colliding with something and, and just making it look really hot or powerful or magical, whatever you want to call it. And if we erase those layers really quick, we can see that they really added a lot um, 
to our to our overall image to make it seem like there's something going on over here. It's not just going off into oblivion. Okay, we're co we're coming down to the final stretch here. We've got our image basically set in stone, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do Control Shift Alt E, and that will merge all visible layers into one layer. So. Yeah, that does exactly what I just said it will do. And we're going to come up here, go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And this is your time to experiment with whatever you think looks coolest for you. For me, the main things I'm going to stress, I'm going to bump the exposure, or not the exposure, the contrast rather. I'm going to drop the shadows a little bit, bump the highlights, bump the whites, drop the blacks a little bit, bump the texture up bump the clarity up not too much not not crazy like all the way up here because that just looks absurd but maybe around 15 or 13 or so dehaze i'm not going to touch vibrance saturation i'm not going to touch it's already pretty saturated down here and i'm going to come down here to color mixer and if you want you can adjust your hues uh, so we can make we can make it even more orange or make it more red um, I don't think I'm going to touch these too much. If I want, I might add it, make it a little more red, so about a negative seven. But other than that, I'm not going to touch it too much. Go over to luminance, maybe make that a little brighter, just to again make it pop a little bit more, make it seem like it's producing a little more light. We're going to go down here, and one of the final things we're going to do here is in the effects, we're going to add some grain, make it look a little more gritty almost like a film poster. You can add some vignetting if you want. I think it kind of takes away from it. We're gonna click OK. And here we go. This is our final image or close to it. I could go in and tinker around a little bit more if I wanted, but this is just about as good as it gets, guys. Um, for me, at least. I'm <laughs> not going around touting that I'm the best Photoshop artist around. But I think, I think I've come up with a pretty cool Harry Potter tutorial. And I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you guys get something cool out of this. Something you can share with your friends and impress a girl or a guy. I don't know. And thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully I can come at you with a new tutorial soon. I don't know when, but hopefully soon. And uh, appreciate you guys checking it out. Leave a like subscribe if you wouldn't mind and looking forward to the next one take care guys